where once United Nation was divided by the great state walls, as tensions continue to escalate. An increasing number of Victorians have applied for weather asylum in the Northern Territory, while Queensland stands Queenslanders. G'day and welcome to Queensland and to part three of my low opta meteor radio restoration. In part one I rewound the transformer, hit part two with the radio working, I was able to do an alignment, I fixed a couple of unusual problems it had and this week I'm going to do the cabinet. Here's the cabinet, it's been damaged in transit when the owner bought it so I need to repair it and I probably need to refinish it. The bulk of the damage is in this top left corner and it's actually split the ply it must have hit the ground with some considerable force it's got cracks here look it's all loose uh, the trim's broken in several places and looking at the back here it's debonded from itself now i won't show it on camera but i'll need to remove these side speakers i should be able to take the whole grill and speaker off as one there's some trim needs to come off i'll do all that i'll come back and we should have an empty case to work on i've removed the speakers and front grill and as i said the whole grill and the speaker came out as one these are still connected, I took them all out as one piece. The grills on the side here for the side speakers have tiny little screws in each corner and I couldn't see them initially and I was kind of pulling at it and wondering how it worked but uh, there they are. This radio has been stored in some damp condition somewhere. There we go, so that comes off. There's a nice little golden piece of cloth on the back. This is one of the side speakers, it's a permanent magnet speaker they usually use electrostatic speakers in German radios, but this design is a little bit different and I'll show you later, there's a switch that turns these speakers on and off. Something I like to think about while I'm asleep is this broken trim. It's also broken down the bottom here, so I don't know what I'm going to do about it. I'm going to try and take it off and see if I can save it. It has a little nail there. It may actually be brass. I assumed it would be plastic or something, but it might be brass over some plastic. And it's just got a nail here of, I'm not sure how I'm going to get, oh, there it goes. Uh, it should lift out of there, I hope. So yeah, it comes out, okay. That's what I'd hope would happen. I'll keep going down the front. I actually thought that would break off. And it did there. Well, that's coming out better than I thought. It appears to be brass, uh, laid over some plastic strip so I'll finish taking this out hopefully I can kind of rejoin it it's never going to look good but it's about the best I can do I think and once again there's a nail there holding it down oh look at that <laughs> it's all falling apart uh, I was going to say I'll take these bits of trim off as well I assume they just clip in like the last bit yeah right. oh no um, I'll take all this off and come back and then we'll see if I can do a repair on this. Now this whole top has come off but there's some damage to the front here as well. So this front panel has come off the side panel and it's come off this side panel as well. So I need to put some adhesive in there and in here. I'll glue all that back together and I should be able to fit the top back on and hopefully fill up most of those gaps. This is from the back, but that's the loose bit on the front. I'm going to try and run some adhesive down there. It'll fall down between the front and the side piece. Oh, now I need to try and scoop it in there. So I'll put a bit down here as well. Okay, I think that'll squeeze together. Yeah, there's adhesive all the way down there, so that's that's good. This one I've got to join down here. Once again, I've got to put adhesive in the top there and let it fall right down into the crack. So that's running all the way down there. So if I squash that together, it's got right down to there. That's perfect. 
Now I'll just take all that excess off. It's, it's just need a light clamp, I think. Well, um, that'll do. I'll let that dry. A few more clamps on there than I initially thought I'd need, but it's in the right place, so I'm happy with that. We'll let it dry overnight. We'll have a look in the morning. All right, so next morning, I'll take these clamps off and we'll have a look. That looks pretty good. That's glued down nice and solid. Very good. So all I'm going to do now is apply adhesive all in here and I'll push this all together and let that dry as well. I'll paint some adhesive on. Right, I've got most of this covered. Um, I don't want to get any on here. I do have the chips of veneer that fell off there, so I'll try and refit them. I think that's about covered it. All right, let's see if we can get it to join. There's a little splinter of veneer there. I'll try and get some adhesive in there and make sure that lines up. I'll put a clamp on the end here to hold it together that way and I'll put a clamp to hold it together that way, squash it down and yeah, nice. It's got a bit of a lip there, it's not quite flush so I'll try and push it back as well. I might have to let go of the other clamps a little bit. That's better, that's much better. That's looking good so I'll leave all that sit there for a couple of hours and come back take the clamps off and we'll move on again. I've taken the clamps off, I left it overnight, I thought it might be safer to do that. I'll try and find the little bits of missing veneer and see if they can be glued back on. Here's all the little bits of veneer that came out and I don't think I can do anything with them. Uh, I can see that went there but look it's all damaged and it would be like a jigsaw puzzle and this piece is missing. So I'll just cut that off square, cut that off square with the grain. The grain's running across anyway so it'll look alright and then I'll put some new veneer over it. I'm just trying to cut this off. This bit here, there it goes, okay. It's a bit crooked, I'll just straighten it up. There we go, that looks okay. Um, I'll, I'll just cut this off, but I'll cut it off better when I get the bit of veneer in there. I'll cut both pieces of veneer at once. I'll put a bit of filler in there and that'll build it up to the right height. All right, I finished filling and shaping that damage. I have a bit of veneer, this is walnut. And I'm hoping I can put that in there. So I might tape it and then cut it to length. All right, that should be okay. Just put another bit of tape there. So there's the other end. I'm going to have to cut it about there. Let's cut it a bit bigger to start with. All right, this just needs a very small amount. I'll take it off and I'll cut it on the bench, I think. I'm going to use the guillotine, I get a nice square cut and it's very even. There we go. I went back and forth just cutting that on the guillotine and uh, look that's that's pretty good now. It's reasonably taut over there, no that's fine. So I'll glue that into position. So I'll use PVA glue, this is quick drying. There's a little bit of a hole there, I'll fill it up with glue. I didn't see that while I was I had it lying the other way, it's on its back now so I can see it. So I'll butt that down there. And I'll squeeze out a bit of glue but that'll be okay. I'll just clean that off, I don't want that there, it can affect the stain. I've played with this for a few minutes and it looks pretty good. I'll just leave it like that, I don't think it even needs tape on it. So I'll let that dry and come back a bit later. I've sanded this repair pretty smooth. It's, it's not too bad. It's, it's level with the rest of it. Nice join and the side's good. I just wanted to get that bit that was hanging over the edge off so I didn't knock it off while I stripped the finish back. So just down from the repair, there's a couple of little bits missing. I'm just gonna use filler on that. I did think of replacing that strip all the way down with some new veneer, but if this veneer is no match, it's gonna look out of place. While I was waiting for the adhesive to dry for the veneer, I took this little trim strip off that just had some nails holding it in. And now I've got to try and get this low opta badge off. It looks like the little badge has three sort of prongs on it 
and they're coming through the timber here. You could just see the little dimple where they were. So I've dug a bit of the timber away and you can see that one there. Perhaps it's, you can just see the gold tip of it and I can find these two. They're a bit hard to see, but I can probably use a punch and push them back down. That'll give me enough room to get under the badge and pull it up. I've got my uh, punch on the end of the pin there. So if I can tap it through, hopefully it'll go through and not just dome over the end. Now I've got the punch over the next one. This middle one disappeared, so I think the badge has moved away a bit. So I'll just give this a quick tap. Uh, there it is, it has moved away. So I should be able to just, hopefully, oh my gosh. Oh, okay, there it is, in one piece. The next thing to do was to strip off the original finish. I'll use a bit of poly stripper on it. It'll come off. I'll put some Glad Wrap on to stop it evaporating. That's been suggested a number of times and it works well. Uh, I would have liked to have left the original finish on, but it's really got some damage around it. So it wasn't worth patching it. Now I'm not gonna show you stripping it. It's pretty simple. You paint the stripper on, put some Glad Wrap on, let it sit for half an hour or so, come back, scrape it off, clean it off with some water and metho, and then it's ready to be prepped for some stain. So I'll come back when this is all stripped off. I said I wasn't going to show the stripping process, but then I realized not everyone's seen me strip some wood before. Um, I put stripper on, it's been about half an hour, and I've got a scraper here, and it's simply a matter of just scraping off the, the varnish or the finish that's on there. And I'll probably have to do that again. It hasn't taken it off in certain places. So that's how it usually works. You need to do it two or three times to get rid of the old finish. I also said this was Glad Wrap. That's cling wrap or cling film, whatever you want to call it. Glad Wrap, of course, is a trade name. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll keep going. I'll come back when it's all done. It's all finished and it took a few days because, you know, you kind of miss bits and you have to put some more stripper on, come back, do it again. But it's all done. I've gone over it with metho and some steel wool to get off any remaining little bits. And I've given it a light sand with some 220 paper. So it needs another light sand, of course, but I've, I've gone around and filled up little bits of missing veneer. There's the repair. I've sanded that back and it's come up okay. It's a different color. I've got to try and color match it or something. I'll just blow the dust out of that, out of that gap there. That looks better. So that's, that should be all right. I'll have to try and color match it though. That's where the missing veneer was, so I've put some filler in there. That needs to be sanded off. This edge where I've re-glued it, I've also put some uh, ebony filler in there, so it's black, and uh, that'll that'll come up okay. I'll continue sanding this. As I said, I'll use a finer sandpaper, uh, get rid of all the bits of filler. I'll come back, and we should be able to stain it. I've sanded this back and used a very fine paper on the end, and it's, it's come up pretty good. I'm going to put some grain filler on it. It has some little marks in it, little scratches, so I'm going to put some grain filler on it. I have a friend down in Melbourne that laughs at me, but I've had issues before not using grain filler, so I'm going to stick to using it. And this is the filler I use. It's Acrocoat. Uh, it's fast drying as water based, so you'd only leave it for half an hour, an hour or so, and it's ready to sand off. I do have another one that you paint on, and that takes about six hours to dry. So this is pretty good. You're supposed to apply it and wipe it off with a spatula and let it dry, then sand it back. Well, I don't bother with that. I just rub it in like a wax and then I don't have to sand it back as hard. So I'll just do a little bit and show you what I'm going to do. So I'll put a little bit on the front here and it also gives you a good indication of the colour underneath and any deficiencies in your wood. Now I particularly want to put it over the areas where it's got filler. If you put stain on top of filler it just soaks up the, the stain and you end up with a very dark piece of, of wood there. So I put this on and then it, you get a much more even coat. You can put the stain over the top of this. So I'll keep doing this and as I said you just I just rub it in like that. I will then sand it off later and uh, it'll come up nice and smooth. The grain filler has been drying for about an hour. I have some 400 grit paper here and I will have to go along and just sand it off. It'll take the top layer of the um, clear coat off, but it'll leave any of the tiny little crevices in the grain filled up.
that's it close up and you can probably see that it just leaves the grain filler in any of the little you know defects in the grain or not defects but uh, little crevices so this just needs a light sand i shall continue doing this this will take me a half hour or so we'll come back and we should be able to put the stain straight over the top of this i've sanded all that down didn't take that long actually um, i have to put a black line around here this is the end grain of the top veneer here so uh, they painted it out black and you can still see a bit there so i'm going to mask it off and i'll put some black paint on there so pretty simple uh, just put a bit of masking tape along the top here and of course down the front looks like it even went down the bottom i'm not sure if it did or not but i'll do it anyway So I've got to go and do these corners as well. This flexible tape goes around pretty easily. Get a reasonably smooth turn. So I'll keep going with this. I have to go all the way down and around and I've got to do the other end as well, of course. So I'll do this. I'll come back when it's ready to paint. I've masked it all up except for this tiny strip where I need to paint. Uh, but you do need to cover the whole thing. The spray gets everywhere. Now it's just a fast drying acrylic paint and it it goes over anything, it sticks to anything, it's really good. Oh, I just sprayed over poor old Shana there. Uh, so it doesn't need to be a whole thick coat either. And then that'll dry in probably an hour or so. Let's do the other end. And that's all it needs. Uh, this dries very, very fast, but I'll leave it to harden up. I've got to put stain over the top. I don't want the stain reactivating it. So I'll leave it till tomorrow, and then I'll put the stain on. It's the next day. I'll take this masking off. I did pull it back and just peek and make sure I got it right. So I'll take all the masking off. I'll see what it looks like. It's come up nice. I'll rub it over with a bit of fine steel wool and that will just take all the little rough bits off where it's stuck to the masking tape. Yeah, see that's that's perfectly smooth now. So I'll do the rest of that and we'll get ready for staining. That black's come up really good. The steel wool just takes that fluffiness off it and it's nice and flat. I've got some stain here and this is walnut. And that's what the original colour was. I believe they made uh, a blonder colour, a lighter colour radio as well but this one was walnut so I'll stick with it so I'll just put a bit on and that is the original colour wipe off the excess as quick as I can. I don't want it too dark if I can help it. And that looks wonderful. Yeah, really nice, really nice. Now I'm interested to see how this area here is going to come up, whether it'll match in or I need to color it a little bit. Yeah, that is lighter, so I'll just let that dry. I'll add a bit more stain. We'll try and darken it up a bit. I'll continue to stain this. I'll come back when it's all done. This is ready for its top coat. I did run over it with some... A zero 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 steel wool and that just just smooths it off a bit and make sure there's no little bits sticking up anywhere now this is a tack cloth it's it's got a wax on it i think it feels like wax and i'll just run over that and that'll just pick up any dust that's sitting on there 
I'm going to use my spray gun to spray the top coat. It's a 70% semi-gloss lacquer, so it goes on quite nicely. I can't leave the camera in here, it's a new camera. I'm going to take it out. My old camera was so covered in paint that I could barely see it. So I'll take that outside. We'll come back and look at it once I've painted it. Here's a funny thing. I've removed all the stain. I'm back to bare timber again. I put two coats of the lacquer on there and it wouldn't harden. It should harden within minutes and it was still quite soft a day later. And here it is here, and it should be clear, not yellow like that. So it's time expired. I can't use that anymore. My friend down in Melbourne uses the spray cans, and he has great success with it. So I'll try them out, see how it comes up. Now I've got to go and put all the black around the edges again, stain it, go through the whole process, mask it up. Once that's done, I'll come back. I'll show you the finish I'm going to use on it, and we'll see how well it comes up. The cabinet's ready for its top coat. I've put new stain on it and I've done around the edges in the black again. This time when I put the stain on, I actually sat there and rubbed it right in. The first time I just sort of slopped it on and then <laughs> rubbed it off. I think it's come out much better the second time around. This is the clear coat I'm going to use. It's a Dulux Duramax. I've used Duramax paint before and it's pretty good. So I expect the same result this time. As I said before, I don't want to destroy my new camera. I'll just spray this little bottom bit here. We'll just see how it goes on. Then I'll take the camera outside. Now that looks good. I'll get the camera out of here. I'll finish spraying it. I'll come back when it's finished and we'll do an inspection. It's been about five days since I last showed you this and it's all done. It come up pretty good. You yeah, can't complain about it. It needs to be sanded back and then polished, which is what I'll do now. I did have a change of plan halfway through this. I put maybe five or six coats of this Duramax semi-gloss on there. It was too dull. Um, I use 70% gloss normally. I reckon this is somewhere near 55, so it was way too dull. So I switched to this SCA. This is Super Cheap's own brand acrylic paint. I reckon it's terrific. It works really well. It's clear, high gloss. It's an automotive type finish, and it dries in about... 20 minutes you can give it another coat the other one was an hour so six coats took most of the day this one works really well so that's what it's got on it now and this will cut back nicely so to finish it off I'm going to sand it back um, I've got waterproof or wet and dry paper here I'll probably start with about P400 this is the European standard P uh, not the American standard so there's 400 and then it goes 6, 8 there yeah. I think it goes all the way I've got up to 2000 I think P2000 and yeah, so there is another one. You can get up to P3000, which is very fine. I don't know that I need to go that far. So I'm going to start with the 400, see if that's enough. If not, I'll have to come back to maybe 240 and then go to 400. I have the 400 grit paper here. I'll just demonstrate what I'm going to do. You're probably thinking it looks good enough. Why don't you leave it? But this will finish it off. It, it flattens it out. And as I always say, it gives it a luster more than a gloss. That seems to be coming off okay with the 400. Uh, areas where I haven't quite cut deep enough, you can see where the finish has dipped into the grain. And you need to get rid of all that, so hopefully there's enough layers on there to get, get that out of there. Now where I've rubbed that properly, that's come out nice, it's flat, you can't see any imperfections. Over here where I haven't done it, it's still got imperfections where the finish is a bit lower than this finish on the top here. It's gone into the grain of the wood or where the depressions of the grain is. So you've really got to get rid of that and that'll come up nice and flat. Then I can polish this. So I'll keep going with the 400. I'll come back when I've done the top and we'll move on to the next grade of paper. I'm just finishing off a couple of little defects in there, just try and get them out. But I've actually done the entire radio. I was having so much fun. Uh, it looks pretty good actually, so it's come up okay. I don't think I've gone through the finish anywhere. And that was 400, so it's, gosh, it's smooth. Uh, I'm going to run over it with maybe some 2000, just to get any little scratches from the 400 out, but you know, really that's good enough. It's still got to be polished afterwards. So I'll run some 2000 over it and see if it actually does anything.
very, very hard. It's trying to grip all the time. Might be better using your hand. I don't like doing this because you tend to get kind of marks here. Yeah, a bit easier doing it with the hand. Even that's falling off, so it needs lots of water. And that is baby bottom smooth. It's probably not much better than up the other end actually, but it's, it's gee that's nice. So I'm going to keep going with that. I'll do it all in the 2000. I probably have to use my hand. Lots of water. I'm trying to avoid putting too much water on because it is a timber cabinet. But um, yeah, it seems to be, it'll be alright. It's covered in clear scope. So that's a fair indication what it'll come out like with the gloss on it. So that looks really good. And it's lost that super glossy light up the room look about it and it looks much nicer. So let me continue with this and I'll come back when I've finished with the 2000. I've finished with the 2000 grit paper and it's come up very smooth. I've got 99% of the little imperfections flat so it's fine to polish now. To buff it I'll use this, it's Sepatone Mr Buff cutting compound. I think it's fairly coarse. I'm not sure how where it fits in the scale of coarseness but it's reasonably coarse. So I'll use this and this will buff it up pretty well. I have a damp cloth, I put some of the cutting compound on it and I'll just wet the surface here and this will buff it up and it's it'll be an amazing change, transformation. I've just buffed that very quickly, I didn't get too carried away with it. And there it is, look at that, it's like a mirror. <laughs> now I've got a little bit there and I think I've gone through the buff. I think the camera's picking it up. There's a little defect there and I've rubbed through the clear gloss into the semi-gloss. I need to now clean all this polish off. I'll prepare it again. I'll put two or three or four coats of the clear over it again and then rub it back and then finish with the 2000 and then I'll polish it again. I have almost expected that to happen so I'm not worried about it. It's just adds another day. So I'll get some solvent, clean all the polish off and give it another respray. But that's how it's going to come out and it's fantastic. It's absolutely beautiful. So next time I come back, it'll be a couple of days later, I'll be back to this stage again. I'll apply this stain and then I can polish it off. You may think I've made a mistake with the editing and I've put old video in. Unfortunately, that's not the case. This is the way the radio is now. I've stripped it back again. When I left you a few days ago, I was just going to put a top coat on just to cover that bit where I'd gone through into the semi-gloss underneath. A few days after I'd put the top gloss on and I was going to rub it back the next day but I came out the night before and I put my moulding meter on top of the finish and it sunk into the finish. I was able to repair that and it looked alright, it was fine. I used this poly bottle while I was sanding it back and I sat it on top of the finish. I left that overnight, I came back and that left a mark as well. At that point I thought this is no good. Having that semi-gloss underneath and then putting the gloss over the top, two different paints, it wasn't working. So I've stripped it back and that's where I'm at now. I'm going to restain it and then I'll just use this clear gloss acrylic and this will come up good. I've used this many times and it's perfect. So I'll turn the video off, I'll restain it, refinish it, resand it, repolish it. I'll come back and we'll see what it looks like. I finally got a satisfactory finish on this and I actually stripped it off again after that last bit of video. I put this on and it looked like it had been sneezed on. It just came out in blobs. It's not the paint. It was me or the humidity or the atmosphere. I'm not sure what it was. So I went back to using Duramax and this worked all right. It is not as glossy as the other one, which is good because I didn't want 100% gloss. And I reckon this has come out around about 70 or 80% full gloss. So it's a nice finish for furniture. I need to respray all this black piece in the back here. And there's a little bit up the front there that was black as well where the dial goes. So I'm going to paint that. I've got some matte black paint. Uh, I've masked it all up. I've used low adhesion tape around where the finish is so it shouldn't damage it. I'll put my mask on and give it a spray. That's covered pretty well. I'll give it an hour or so and then I'll give it another coat. 
This is the trim strip that goes around the top and the front of the radio and it was broken during the drop when it was dropped during shipping. They've made it by using flat brass strip and they've just bent it around into this shape and the two ends join together or they push together here and this goes in the tiny slot that's all the way around the front and top of the radio. So that's all that holds it together. There's no adhesive or anything. It's just friction in the, uh, in the slot. I need to join these back together. So what I thought I might do, that one goes there. What I thought I might do is put little bits of wire in the hole that's here, either side, push it all together with the wire and some super glue. And maybe that will hold it long enough for me to get it onto the radio. I've got a bit of hookup wire here and I'll see. I don't think oh, it'll, it'll just fit. Yeah, that's a nice fit. Maybe I can use that. I was getting ready to put some wire in, but I think this is a little bit tight because it's actually deforming the brass. So I'm going to squash it with some pliers here just to make it a bit more of a flattened shape, not, not so much round. I'll see if this fits. Yeah, that's that's a bit better, I think. I think this adapt opened up. There's two bits in there now. I'll take them out and um, put some super glue in there and hopefully they'll stay there. I've got some glue on there and I'll just try and push it all together. There it is. I'm just pushing it together to let it set. Uh, but that looks pretty good. It's got a bit of glue on there. I'll wipe that off. I think that'll be okay. I'll fix the other brakes and they'll be ready to fit back on. I continued on cleaning up the bright work on the radio and I pulled this up and I had this sitting upside down. This has got wood grain in there like it's genuine wood. And as you can see, it's a bit of veneer that they've put on the metal backing. It has another bit here, which I don't think you can see readily. And that's metal, and they've just put some sort of fake wood grain effect on it. But that has to be stripped back and refinished. There's two nuts on the back, so if I remove those, that escutcheon on the front should come off. And I, th I think the gold trim might come off as well. I thought undoing those nuts would let me push this through, but I can't do that. There's a boss here and that's attached to this metal bracket. So that must be just glued on or something. I'm not sure how that's held on. I suspect it's glued and has a couple of locating pins. I'm not going to try and pry it off. What I'll do is use acetone, get the finish off here, and I'll just have to mask around here and refinish this. I'm going to put this decorative strip back on and it has a little groove there that this fits in. I'm going to do the one that's not broken first so that I know what I'm up against. But it should just tap into that groove there. I've cleaned it out with a knife. So we'll see how that goes. The end is bent over where there's a tack so I'll line that up. Line the T-shape up with the slot. And I'll see if it'll tap in. It's going in okay, it doesn't seem to be flattening the top off, which was a concern. I've gone around the corner there okay, I rounded off the edges there so I didn't put any little marks on it. This isn't staying there, but there's a tack goes in this hole here, so I'll put that in. Uh, there's a tack on the top. I'll put the other side on. We'll come back and see what to do next. I've positioned this uh, trim around the edge here now. It was a bit hard to get together. You've got to hold all three pieces together and the little pins that were in there to keep it aligned. So it's only a matter of tapping it down and that should look pretty good. So I'll do all that. There's a couple of nails to put in the end and that'll be that done. I fitted the trim there. That looks good. I also fitted this trim down here where the keys go. I've also refitted the speaker grills. 
There's only one thing to do, that's to fit the badge back on. There it is. I didn't think I was going to get to this day where this was put back on. I'm finally there. I'll finish the rest of the uh, radio off and I'll take it inside and we'll refit the chassis. I'm inside. I've got this ready to put back in the cabinet. I had trouble with this switch in part two and it was crackling when you rotated it. This is for the AM only and it's pretty much just for uh, when you're on shortwave you can pull the switch out and it gives you a wider bandwidth so you can find the stations a bit more easily. You can tune them in. The chassis had been sitting here for a few weeks now and I tried it out again and the crackling had come back. So I drilled a little hole in the side here and that allowed me to use the straw on a can of deoxid and just squirt a bit of deoxid in there and that fixed it immediately. So when you're on AM there's no crackling again. I've refitted the knobs and this one was missing its gold ring around the edge here. I ended up mounting it in the lathe and I used one of these and I'd sprayed it with gold paint and just ran it on there as it turned around in the lathe very slowly and painted a new ring on and it looks pretty good it's kind of a bit more bronze looking than the original gold but it looks pretty good you wouldn't notice it without really looking for it so I'll get this ready and we'll put it back in the cabinet before I do fit the chassis I've got to replace this crossover capacitor for the tweeters I guess you call uh, that's actually got a nut behind it I think that would have screwed into the um, into the frame. Yeah. Uh, the schematic said 100 microfarad. That's what's in there, and this one's rated at 30, 35 volts. So I'll find a replacement and I'll put that in there. I've got a new capacitor here. It's 100 microfarad at 100 volts. I've put a little pigtail on one end, and I'm going to do it on the other end as well. I don't know if you've seen this before. It's just a bit of um, pin with a slot in the top and you can make a little pigtail there. That's all it is, a little pin and a slot in the top for the wire. I need to cut that little tag off, I'll just use the side cutters here, they'll take it off. And I'll straighten that up and that's ready to put the wire in there. Let's see if I can get this in here, it's a tight squeeze, it didn't leave much room. Okay, I've put the bolts in the bottom of the case that hold the chassis in and I can start putting some ancillary equipment back in. These lamps are for the uh, various tone switches on the front and it should clip in here somehow. There it goes. All right. So that's in. There's two dial lamps to put in so they just go in little brackets here. Just soldering on the main speaker wire here. This is the wiring for the high frequency driver. And of course this one here. I've still got the magic eye to fit, so that just goes on two screws that are down here. Alright, the two nuts are done up. I've had one final good look around inside. Everything's in its place. The valves are all in their sockets. Uh, the wires are all connected. So I can put the back up and it should fit in that slot down the bottom there. And these just fit into their little slots that are cut in the wood. I missed it. There we go. One there. One there. That one. And that one. And the little meteor booklet that goes in the back there. All that's left to do is see if it works. Alright, should have warmed up. I'll turn it up. Sounds alright. Can't play music, as we know. When you know it, it's all music. Mm -hmm. 
Until into a swimming pool the whole day in. Cops turned up to a party, he thought I'll just take him off over here, get into this big limousine and, and drive it off. He was too pissed though. <laughs> All right, um, let's. <laughs> so that's okay. I'll put it on medium weight. Uh, I don't. I oh, haven't got much of an aerial on that. <laughs> yes. Now he also made things clear. First of all, it, a whole range of things arise from this because the nation's getting older. So that's AM. Another station here. Bit, bit, uh, bit distant. Now you're not speaking for the club, Gary, when I ask you this, but. We're talking. Yeah, you know. yeah it's, it's not coming through. I haven't got the proper aerial attached at the moment. Um, I haven't got enough clips. I'll go up here. There's a racing station here. It's very strong. Eight, Spartan Queen. We stand by for four. Five, one, eight. So that's the racing station. That's got a lot of noise. If I put the ground on there, it would go away. Just a little point on AM reception. These are the antenna inputs. This is an AM antenna uh, trimmer and you can select any of these four holes here. At the moment it's in bypass. There's a coil with a slug adjuster. If you put it in one of the other three, you can trim the antenna to get the best reception for the stations you want to listen to. So at the moment I've got it bypassed. I'm not getting the best reception. It's an average reception across the dial. So if I put it up here and then pick my favorite station and tune it in on my favorite end of the dial, it would pick up much better. I'll just put it back on the FM. This is the 3D button and you put it on the 3D light comes on and all it does is put the side speakers into the circuit. Now every other manufacturer that I know of had them already permanently wired in. They put it on a switch and it called it 3D. Is that a marketing ploy? Probably. I think I've achieved what I set out to do and that was to keep the original patina intact and repaint it and refinish it. So the finish on it is pretty perfect for what I was trying to achieve. It's not glossy, it's got a nice deep luster to it. It looks like it's been there for years. Uh, also things like the bright work here where I don't think it was ever shiny. I'm not sure what it was. They may have gone for an antique look there but I didn't try and polish it up. I couldn't do it anyway because the plating had tarnished. So I just brushed those with a nylon brush and uh, I've left them as they are. I had so much trouble with it. I had trouble with the radio. I had trouble the transformer had to be rewound. The cabinet I stripped back at least four times and there may have been five. So the cabinet gave me a lot of grief as well. So nothing went smoothly with it. And there were times where I would have just pushed it under the bench and forgotten it. But I kept going and I'm glad I did of course. Uh, but it's come up really nice, really authentic, really happy with it. Well, that's it for this video, and this is the end of the series. I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. The owner should be happy, I hope. As always, I hope you enjoyed the series. I hope I didn't bore you to death, and I hope you can join me next time for my next radio adventure.